For all things outdoors, listen to the father of two, the Jesus-loving TV show hosting Harry, True Blood American Redneck, Ben Cole. And listen to the outdoor filming, chef cooking, chocolate milk drinking, John Weismuller. And we are Rooted Podcast. This week, we're joined by a very special guest, a friend of ours that we met at the NWTF convention, Mr. Ryan from Pattern Pros. How we doing, Ryan? Uh, we are doing excellent. I got off shift this morning, only one call yesterday, and sun's shining, and I can already hear the, the birds gobbling, so I'm I'm ready to roll. And you're fired up, ready to rip, huh? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's what I'm talking about. Ben, how's it going over there? Oh, man, it's going good as always. Just another sunshine and day, turkeys <laughs> running through the farms, you know, about to burn some fields off to get ready to plant some corn and soybeans. So we're we're ripping for spring. Right on. There's, so there's you? a lot going on this time of year. Oh, that yeah. That is for sure. Yeah, I what am, about uh, you? <clears throat> man, I'm just same thing. I'm actually all packed up, and I leave tomorrow, tomorrow night, get headed down to Florida, getting ready to chase some black wing osceolas trying to get my first one on the ground there so nice. i'm excited man i'm just ready i'm i'm just i'm just ready man ryan listen <clears throat> i don't know if you know this about me but my favorite thing in the world to do is turkey hunt so the fact that i can now have the ability to start early in a different state it fires me up man oh i bet uh that that's uh that just makes it better it just extends your season yeah absolutely uh, and uh, my my nephews actually got a chance to go hunt. Um, I think some uh, some private ground over the, over the weekend. So they each actually uh, killed an Osceola. Oh, nice! nice. Over the weekend. So hopefully you uh, you join them in knocking that one off the uh, Grand Slam list. I sure hope so, man. Yeah, and then I'm headed really down do. to Florida the 19th. So next Tuesday we'll be driving down there. And then we're, we'll hunt there from the 19th to the 22nd and then go straight to Alabama and hunt till the 29th. So we got a pretty busy two weeks here coming up. Sounds like it. So I can't wait, I can't wait till I'm older. I can just uh, <laughs> retire and I'll, maybe one of these days I would love to try and get like a grand slam actually in a season. Yeah, yeah, same. That'd be pretty, yeah, be awesome. same, here. same here. I'll definitely want to get a grand slam. And then if I'm traveling like that, I can just tell my wife it's a, it's work related. It's a tennis run off. So <laughs> hey, there you go. That's See, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's right. So <laughs> out of all these things that you've done, and thank you for your service, you know, uh, in the Marines. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for that. But, you know, John mentioned that you were the, one of the guys at Pattern Pro. So what made you guys kind of dive into that, get that started? <clears throat> where, where did that come from? Um, so it's me, my buddies, uh, Christian and Brody. Um, we all were stationed together in California. And uh, it was on, it was about a year and a half ago. Uh, Brody and I were on the phone, and he he was frustrated. He, he got new shotguns, so he was trying a couple different uh, couple different shells out. He's like, dude, they both just patterned like crap. Like he just was not. He, he was just not happy. And he is he is like I, I really like I've said it before, but it's like a master of his craft where he like he has to get as close to perfection as he can. Um, and so he was, he was just real frustrated. He's like, dude, like, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to take either of these boxes of shells hunting. Like they were, they're not, they're not hunt worthy. And so it was kind of like, well, what can we do to, to just figure that out and make that better? And I, I bet it was within a, a few minutes span, five minutes where we kind of started going back and forth. And I don't know who said it, but it was like, hey, what if we had more than one type of shell? in a single box actually allowing you to try out a bunch of shells instead of just spending a bunch of money on boxes of shells that several of them, you may never even shoot again. They may just sit on your, on your shelf and just collect, collect dust. And so it was like, yes, all right, let's, let's, let's do that. And I, I went and talked to some friends and family who are big hunters, uh, 
that day and I think uh, the next the next day and I think I called Brody that next night and it was dude let's freaking do this like there is not there's there's nothing else out there like it that any of these people have heard of um and so it just kind of started to snowball so then we um we brought Christian in and uh it was just kind of one thing after another we started figuring stuff out mm-hmm. so we started with uh we started with waterfowl that's what we all kind of really started hunting together and so it's eight different types of shell with three of each shell in a single box so you got 24 shells um and amongst that you've got pattern pack one pattern pack two so a total of 16 different types of shell and then each one of those has shot size two and then shot size three uh and then right now we have our 20 gauge box um which is eight different types uh but just shot size two so we're we're looking to expand that. We're doing the uh, the Delta Waterfowl Show here soon, um, <clears throat> so we're going to expand that. But now, John, as a big turkey hunter, um, the turkey box that we just came out with will probably excite you a little bit more. Um, there you go. So we, hit, yeah. we, had, we kind of messed. We've been messing around with it, um, and originally it was three shells in a box, uh, a cheap shell mid-grade and then an expensive shell a tss shell um but just wasn't getting as as good attraction on it so we switched it up uh and kind of due to our like relationships with some of these ammo companies um it's allowed us to make the price actually attainable uh so now we have five different shells in a single box um and it, it's the age old question of, Hey, what shell, what choke in this gun? Um, and it's, it's nonstop. Um, really? so it's, yeah, I mean, for our, like our, we have two different 12 packs or 12 gauge and then two different 20 gauge packs. Um, so it's, uh, we have, uh, like all lead load pack for 12 gauge and then we have an all TSS box. Uh, for 12 gauge and then, uh, pretty much the same thing with, with 20. Uh, it's a little bit, a little bit different. There's a couple of TSS loads and, um, in, in one box. And then the, the second box will be, uh, all TSS. So five different TSS loads. And it's actually going to be cheaper to buy that all TSS box for five shells than it would be to go out and buy your average, you know, like <laughs> normal. Um, TSS box. Nice. So, what's your favorite shell to shoot turkey hunting wise? Um. So honestly, until recently, I hadn't messed around with a whole lot. Um. I had shot last year the cheapest stuff possible. Mm-hmm. Um. And I I patterned it, so I knew what, what it was going to do. It was the Winchester Super X. Uh. I think three inch number fours or fives. I can't remember. And I knew I was like, all right, I can't shoot any, any farther past 40 yards. Just not, just not going to do what I need it to do. Uh, but I mean, I killed my Tom last year at 25 yards and no. he's, he's dead as they come. Um, but it's, we get a lot of messages about people asking us, Hey, what do you, what do you recommend for this gun or and this choke? And, and it's just so, it's so hard. You can't ever give anybody like the actual answer that they, that they want. It just, there's so many different, there's so mm-hmm. many different options nowadays with so many different shells and then so many different choke tubes and so many different guns. And then within those, there's different, you know, this, it may be this choke tube and it may have patterned like crap, but you either open up or, or constrict it more. And all of a sudden it's a completely different pattern. So it's so hard to give people the, the answer that they – you're never giving them the answer they're actually looking for. Um, but hopefully for us, we can just give them – hopefully if they just – that's going to really give them the answer that they – that that's giving them the answer that they that they want. But Right. So, you know, you're talking about – you know, having different options to pattern your guns and things like that. So let's dive in real quick to 
patterning the gun, like what's the importance. So I've got a, a funny story to tell you guys. Last year I had a group of dudes out. This guy had just bought this shotgun from a pawn shop. And I said, Hey man, you need to shoot your gun. You need to make sure that it's patterning correctly. You need to make sure that, you know, first of all, the barrel's not warped. I mean, you know, I mean, that stuff can happen when you're buying a used gun from a pawn shop. <laughs> so yeah. Needless to say, he's like, no, nah, man, I'm good. I was like, why don't you shoot my gun? I know that it's shooting right. You can just take mine, call it a day, kill a turkey. No, he was dead set on shooting that gun. And we get out there at our uh, ranch here, Sinking Creek Ranch, and chasing this bird up the mountain. So he was halfway up the mountain. So we're zigzagging to get up there. Finally get up there. The bird's stuck in a strut zone. Won't go anywhere. He's just going back and forth, back and forth. And for anybody that doesn't know what a strut zone is, that bird ain't going nowhere. He's going to walk about 10 yards one way, turn around and go 10 yards the other way, and just continue that circle. So obviously there was a hen up there somewhere that he was trying to impress or something. You know, something had him locked in right there. So needless to say, the short of that part of the story, he gets to 40 yards, or my buddy crawls up to him because there was an embankment going down the road where they made the road and he crawls down by that and comes up and shoots shoots a couple times and misses <laughs> both both times and i mean hey misses happen right i've missed my first year turkeys especially when they're super close um i was like man I, I hate that dang you know i thought well we just chalk that one up as you know that was a tough shot get down the mountain here come two more so him and his buddy were going to double up. Well, <laughs> I hit that call one time at the bottom of the mountain. I said, hey, we're going to try it right here, see if we can locate a bird. One cluck and <clears throat> they just hammered. I said, sit here right now. They sat down. I walked around behind them and started calling while I was walking before I could get set down. So I'm still standing up, just kind of propped on a tree because I could see the birds coming. Before I even could get set down, here they come. I mean, they are running to us because they thought we were on around the corner. Well, those guys were sitting on the corner. I was on around the corner. <laughs> so they come in, put on a show, blow up. The guy on the right, swoom, smashes that turkey. The guy on the left, <laughs> boom, 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 whiffed. Three shots. I said, brother, that is nice. an expensive morning. You just, I said, dude, you got to go shoot your gun, man. And he said, man, I should have used your gun. I said, yeah, I told you. I told you that's what you needed to do. <clears throat> but nonetheless, man, that was tough. So anyway, he went back home and patterned it, and it was like 15 inches off. I was like, yeah, I think you need a barrel. Uh, it's time for a new barrel on that one, you know, but. You know, I just goes to show you the importance of actually patterning your gun to see which shell actually well, yeah. works the best with your setup, your choke, your actual gun. There, there's so many factors that play into that. You know, so that's that's what I think of every time I, I think of what you guys are doing is you need to go pattern your gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of. I, I see it on, you know, Facebook groups or talking to people and they're like, oh, I bought, you know, <clears throat> four or five different boxes of shells. And I'm like, dude, like that gets expensive. Even if just one of those boxes is TSS, you're over a hundred dollars, like r right off the bat. Um, and it's, uh, it, <laughs> man, that's, uh, I don't know if some of these guys have got a little bit more free reign with, uh, in terms of just spending money. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. But, I'm I'm not coming home. Hey babe, I just spent a hundred dollars on ammo on something that I don't know if it's gonna work or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm good on that. Yeah, same here. Because you know, I grew up uh, kind of the same way. It's just like my dad, you know, got God bless him. He was he he was just like, here you go, boy. Here's some shells. Heck, it it it'll shoot out of the gun. Yeah, it it'll be all right. And it's like all right, I didn't know any better, you know? And then I started missing wh whether it was big bucks or it was turkeys or, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? And then he's like, oh, well, I mean, you know, I guess we could have patterned it. It's like, yeah, that would have been 
pretty all right had we done that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I had no idea. And I've got three different kinds of shells I'm shooting at this bird, so it's shooting three different kinds of ways. I mean, you know, it's just something we never did until I got a little older and I started research. I'm like, I'm like sighting in a rifle. What does that even mean? <laughs> you know, like I have no idea what's going on. And yeah. you know, now obviously I I'm, I kind of know what I'm doing, but I mean, it's it's it really is important for people to pattern their shotguns before they go out because man, the last thing you want to do is miss a big old bird. Oh yeah, I think some of it is just people being <clears throat> they're being kind of naive. Um, sure, or where they just they don't they may not just know any better. They um, and I see it a lot of the time. We're talking with with duck hunters, uh, which is something we're really trying to change. Is like, well, yeah, it's just you know, you shoot BBs, like it just it just spreads them out there. And you're like, well, yeah, like that's like the very dumbed down version, but there's a lot more going into it. Um, oh, yeah. And it's just it's kind of daunting with how how many different options are out there for you now. Um, but and you still have some guys that are they're out there that they're shooting essentially double loads at them, which. I mean, hell, if you're within 20 yards, you're probably going to do just fine. But I, I think probably the biggest reason, at least in my opinion, that TSS came about was your margin of error is just so much larger um, compared to what it used to be. You've got so many more BBs that you just – people. somebody figured out, hey, I, I thought I made a good shot on it um, with, you know, number fives or lead. Uh, and now with your number nines of, of TSS, you've got yeah. a literal hornet's nest coming at people. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, so you've talked about <clears throat> ducks. You've talked about turkeys. What is your favorite game animal to hunt out of all of this stuff? Yeah. Um, I mean, I love it all. Um, I have to say I'd have to say ducks, but yeah. it's like here in South Carolina, it's just, I don't, I don't have that opportunity as much. Uh, yeah. I'll go on my wood duck, you know, a few wood duck hunts a year and which I still love. And it's still a blast. And you just sit there and um, some of it, I think is one of my favorite aspects of it is you're usually with your buddies. So you usually get to sit there and BS with them. Um, And I think the the kind of the camaraderie and, and stuff that, that goes along with it is is one of my favorite things. Like I, I'd, I'll still go out by myself, like whatever. I'm I'm going to shoot something, but it's it's still the same time as I I like I like sitting there talking talking with the guys. But so I mean, like I'll go sit in a deer stand, and um, that I, that's mm-hmm. one, I still enjoy my you know my peaceful time. Um, but now it's I, I've really kind of re-geared myself to to thinking so much more for turkeys uh and i've i've always enjoyed it um but i i never had uh, i guess i never had like a ton of opportunity uh to go do it like i did it in college and i killed a couple birds um and then that was i, I killed my first two birds um <clears throat> like two months before i went to boot camp uh um, oh, wow. And then I went to, you know, I got to go have fun at Paris Island for a few months. Um, and then I got shipped off to Hawaii. So then it was like there was just several years where there was no no hunting at all. Um, and then I got to California and started figuring out the deer and um, deer, ducks, dove. And then you'll figure out, hey, there, there actually is some turkeys. Um, there's like just pockets of turkeys in in South Korea. Or, South Southern California. Um, and it's just the only, it sucked was you would have pockets of birds that were on public land, but they weren't secrets to any, like, like, the, like the last, like one of the last times, uh, one of the last times I went on, I like found, uh, like six or seven hens and um, there was a, a Jake that was with him gobbling. And I'd seen other tracks. I'm like, all right, I know there's another bird here. Um, and I was like, yes. I was like, there's no one else here. It was like, um, that was like the week before the season. And then I got there the evening before and I saw him. 
saw the hens and I'm like, there's no other cars there. And I was like, dude, I've got this. I am set. And so I, I, I slept in my car. And I woke up and there was already like two or three other vehicles there. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like that's just when I thought I, I had it. Um, and uh, I mean, I had a cool hunt that morning. He was gobbling like crazy. And I was, we played cat and mouse um, several times throughout the day. Uh, and I actually called him in, uh, but I learned a valuable lesson to just wait a little bit longer. I had come in a di- I had w- made a big loop. And uh, so I got a little sidetracked here, but well, I think we'll roll with it. Um, uh, made a big loop. And I come in another spot, and I, I heard him fire up again where I heard him uh, earlier. And I'm like, yes. I think he, I know he's by himself now because the hens had gotten kind of busted up. And I went and, like, there was literally sagebrush. Like, that's, like, all I had to, like, hide. So I literally, like, laid down up, like, in some sagebrush. Like, threw a decoy out and sat there. And I was like, all right. And then he just shut up. So I sat there for a good I don't know, 30 minutes and just heard nothing. I'm like, he is not far away. Um, but I, I was like, all right, well, I, I guess that's it. And I, I kind of moved that direction towards him, uh, just real slow. Didn't hear anything, didn't see anything again. I'm like, all right, well, I guess that's that. And I went to this tree that had a nice little green patch around it. Where I had seen him and the hens the evening before, before they went to roost. And as soon as I sat down over there, I looked back to where I was at, and he walked right through that spot. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Gosh, dang. Man. I, had, I, yeah, I had a few choice words for myself. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, was, I wasn't thrilled, but. Um, so I guess to you know, your question, I, I guess it's really, it's kind of turkey hunting now. Um, but I, I love it all, man. And it, it, there isn't anything that I'm, yeah, hey, you want to go score hunting? Yeah, let's go. Like, yeah. I feel you. I, I would say turkeys now is, is really my my main focus. Um, now, if I move somewhere else with, with some ducks again, then <laughs> sure. that, that, may, that may change up a little bit. But I love it. So nice. did you uh, – have have you always hunted public or do you do you hunt some private now or – um, I, we have a, we have a hunt club, um, that, uh, we got, uh, we got last year. Um, so there's, uh, I think there's four, 14 of us, um, on the club and there's, it's like ooh, 1700 acres. Um, so it's a, it's a, not like a giant chunk, but it's a, it's a good chunk of land. Um, and I think it was only me and a buddy and then maybe one other guy that took tur- Excuse me. That turkey hunted last year. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I know we got a few more guys this year, so I don't know how that's going to go. But they logged it. They were pretty much – they logged it all the way through okay. um, last season. That really screwed things up. The birds just weren't – they were – they got dispersed, and then they, they really weren't gobbling all but only a few days for the whole season. Um, so that that – that honestly, that hurt last year, but, um, and it was in California. It was all, it was all public land, um, which was a, a real challenge. Um, got close a couple times and just, it, it never, never worked out. But, um, so I guess I haven't actually killed a bird on, uh, on public ground yet. Um, which is something I really, really strive to accomplish. Um, I don't, it's probably not going to happen this year. <clears throat> I've got, I start EMT uh, April 1st, and then oh, wow. we got a family trip in the middle of April. Um, go figure. <laughs> Who the heck planned that? <laughs> uh, it's my father. It's my father-in-law's 60th. Um, oh my goodness! So we're, we're going to uh, Costa Rica, um, so I'm going to go. Fi- I'm going to go do go, go do some fishing. So I'm like. All right, like that's acceptable, but I, I told my wife I was like, can we not have anything between mid March and and the end of April? I was like, whatever you want, May first, like like I'm all like let's do it. But I was like, just yeah, nothing exactly. else. 
let me actually have a full turkey season. Yeah, yeah. He's, exactly. You need yeah, to just talk to your father law and be like, look, dude, you've had 59 of these things. You really, I mean, come <laughs> on, man. You're a, is one more really that important? No, I'm, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Hernia <laughs> yeah. surgery, um, like April 4th. I think it was April fourth last year, uh, so I was man. out for two for two weeks, and uh, so that mm. hurt. Um, yeah, and it, it yeah. sounded like what I from what I heard that was the best two weeks of the whole season. Mm. Uh, right. so of course, like, well, of course it would be. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course, it would uh, be the best two weeks of the season. Then I actually, I had took my. Uh, my kids uh, 410 out because I was like, well, I can still walk around, but I was like, I'm not shooting a turkey load out of a 12 gauge. So I took her little 410 with some TSS out and nice. um, <clears throat> Heck yeah. didn't, get, didn't get to pull the trigger, but it Dang. was, it was still fun to, to turn that thing around. weighs mm-hmm. nothing. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I love my 410, dude. Oh, I do too, man. I got to watch a young man, and I mentioned this on the podcast previous, but I got to watch a young man take two birds back-to-back mornings last year on the youth hunt in in, uh, Georgia, and it was spectacular what that TSS could do with that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really cool to see that. I think the coolest part is just it's it's for the kids. It's so much easier for the kids now. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Because yeah, before it was like, man, you better get them, you better get them close, because it's yeah. just you got yeah. nothing, nothing in that little freaking black and mild of a of a <laughs> of a shot shell. My, my buddy and I were just mm-hmm. talking. To, I was trying to show uh, all this uh, on the target. I was like, how many more BBs you're gonna have with shooting the TSS compared to the to the lead? Um, yeah. She was like, well, she was kind of getting a little down on herself. It was like, oh, it wasn't a great shot. My like, hey, like that bird's still dead. But I was like, no, look at this target that I shot with the TSS. And she was like, oh, I might like, get a lot more. Like, yeah. So it's cool to see like their confidence rise with it. And it's, um, I think that's the best part. Yeah. Uh, she's killed uh, a few deer now and a couple ducks. And nice. so nice. It, that's just so much more. <laughs> so much, it like, I get so much more joy of, of watching her do any of that kind of stuff. Oh, and yeah. she gets, she gets fired up about it too. Mm-hmm. So it's good. I, I can't wait. So is it, <clears throat> how do I ask this? I mean, is that, I guess one of the more important things to you now as a hunter bringing in yeah. the new generation? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's, <clears throat> I mean, so she started, she won her first duck hunt. I think when she was, Either two and a half or three and a half. I can't remember. Like she was just a- anytime I bring home ducks, she would just like I wouldn't even tell. She would just pick them up, start walking around. Like this is awesome. Nice. Um, and so it, she started. She just that's all she. That's what she wanted to do. Um, and she was always like, Dad, when I when can I go hunt? When can I go hunt? When can I go? Hunt? And I was like, All right. So we. Uh, it was actually with Christian Brody. It was on a, a little public, like public lands farm in, um, in California. And so they, they got there real early, uh, make sure we got our spot. And, uh, we got like, I, I put, I remember I put her in the car and she looked at me cause I'm obviously all camoed out. She goes, dad, where's my hunting shirt? And I didn't even think about it. I'm like, you're two and a half. Like, and I was like, all right. So I went and grabbed like one of my long sleeves and like, threw it on her essentially it's a dress yeah right and so we we got a tackle set up and we ended up shooting uh shooting a few birds that day and she had taken her earmuffs off but like every time we shot she had covered her ears so i was like all right she's like i think she's fine but like we got in the car she goes dad that was awesome when can we do that again and i was like you're gonna be all right kid yeah so like yeah. seeing just seeing like the joy that it brings like it, it's brought her it is like it like oh it, it's been so much it's so much more fun sure. uh and then she missed a big buck this year i mean a freaking stud and Dang. it was probably it was my fault um but i like i felt sick about it because i was like i could just picture her holding that deer sure and oh so it's 
Well, hey, man, look, it's only going to get bigger next year. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah, I, hope, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> that, thing's, that thing's still hanging around. I know nobody on the club killed him. Um, so, yeah. Or, I'm, uh, yeah, if if that's the case, I already, she got her first deer mounted. Like, she cried her way into that one. It was a little seven-point seven, seven point basket rack. Honestly, yeah. John, like, not much different yes. than the one be, behind you. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and I was like, that's what I was going to do. I was going to do the European. Well, little girl got her way. She, we were going to the processor, and she was crying. <laughs> like, like, it meant something, not like whining, crying. It was like well, yeah, of course. the shoulders and everything. And I was like, oh, God. And I, I called my wife. I'm like, I'm sorry. We have to. Yeah, hate this so, for you, but oh well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's expensive. <laughs> yeah, th- that one, I told her I was like, hey, like <clears throat> any other deer you kill, we're not doing that. I was like, it's just gonna be just just the skull, like just just so you know that like dad can't afford to just get everything you shoot mounted. Um, mm-hmm. But now my uh, now my youngest, uh, she just turned uh, how old? Is she now six. Uh, she probably know that. Um, uh yeah she just turned six and she started to show more interest in it um and so like last summer she really got into fishing so she like really likes going fishing um and now she's gone on a couple deer hunts um then all three of us um so i'm i'm hoping this year she might be actually ready to, to pull the trigger on something i don't know if if she'll be ready for for turkey season, she's not. She is. Uh, her those two are her. They're just com- like they're polar opposites. Um, she pretty much will just give you the look of like, like you can go and just leave me alone. I'm gonna go do my own thing. Yeah. And the other one wants to be involved in everything. Um, in everything. Uh, but like when I take them to the club now, like I was shooting the other day, and they were just off running around in the woods. Um. So it's been cool, like, to see, like, their growth with it. Uh, they like to go, hey, let's go put corn out that. Like, they like to go do that. Now we'll take them to the club and they'll sit on my lap and they'll, they'll, you know, kind of, they'll steer the truck. And, uh, so it, it's, it's been so much fun watching, just watching them grow with that kind of stuff. Um, and they, 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 they now they're really, they, they're loving it. So it's for me, and for all, all three of us, uh, me, Christian, and Brody, we all have young kids. Um, so for us, like the conservation aspect is, is our absolute biggest mission mm-hmm. because for us, we want there to be more animals on the landscape when our kids are older than we ever had. Um, so like for, for ducks, for instance, um, Brody actually just gave me a, a new stat today where it's, uh, I think it was, Last, uh, a couple of years ago, there was like 12, roughly 12 million ducks were, were killed throughout the season. And roughly 10% of that had been crippled. So like there was an additional 1.2 million ducks that are crippled. And so I would say, I don't, you know, I obviously couldn't tell you, but I, I'm going to go with, there's a probably a fairly significant amount that is people due to people not patterning their guns and understanding what their shells are doing. They're just spewing BBs. So they're not making a clean, clean, quick, I can't speak right now, ethical kill. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so those birds are just getting wasted. So if we can put more of those birds into people's, into people's bags and less actually getting wasted, we're going to be putting more, actually more birds, even if hunters actually bring home more birds, we're still going to prevent crippled birds uh, from being lost, which over time is actually hopefully going to compound. So uh, the way I always look at my like, hey, if we can prevent 10% of that, if we get, you know, as many people to pattern their guns and understand what the shot's doing, if we can put 10% of that, so I'd say 120,000 ducks, back into the breeding population every single year over a number of years that's probably going to start to compound and hopefully <laughs> really reflect upon our, our bird numbers because yeah everyone talks about where hey bird numbers are down and it's 
some of it, yeah, I don't know, is it's I don't know if it's always true, but it, there's definitely some serious speculation that bird numbers are actually dropping pretty good. So that's kind of scary to me. Um, and it, it, sh- it should probably scare a lot of people more than yeah. more than it does. So it's like, why should we not put every drop back in that bucket that we can? Because we all put money towards Delta Waterfowl, Ducks Unlimited, uh, NWTF, and they're phenomenal organizations. But it's like when it comes to the actual hunter, they they don't always want to take it uh, upon themselves to to better themselves in that aspect. Um, and I like I know personally I hate losing a bird. Like I will, I'll spend hours looking for a, a single bird. Um, maybe not like, Hey, I'm gonna spend three hours straight. Um, but it, it means it, it, it bothers me. Um, yeah. and, uh, I don't know how I, I haven't seen a stat in terms of, um, crippled turkeys, but I'm sure some of that is, is, <laughs> is the same, whether they're not paying on their guns, um, or people just trying to make unethical length shots. And I, I would say that might be some of that is probably due to TSS where it's obviously super efficient, but now guys are thinking they can take 70, 80 yard shots mm-hmm. uh, on birds. Um, and it's like, that's, yeah, I'm sure you can kill them, but it, that's not, that's not what you're trying to do. Right. You're not, try- I, I don't want to, I, I will never take a, um, a shot that far, unless it's a bird that I think I've, I've really hit. And I'm trying to just put one more on them. But, um, so the, the conservation aspect of leaving, leaving it better than we found it is yeah. very important for us. Oh yeah. yeah let's do it. Absolutely. I agree with that a hundred percent, you know, and I think it all starts with pattern. Like you said, pattern in your gun. You know, for waterfowl, for turkeys, for all that, because the end goal is to be good stewards of what we've been given by the good Lord. And that is to make sure we're making clean shots, clean kills. And that starts with knowing your pattern. It's just like sighting in your deer rifle. You know, you know where that rifle is going to shoot so you can make the best shot possible. And it's very important. And I think it's overlooked you know, in the waterfowl and the turkey world, I think more people um, are going to pattern their guns for turkeys than they are for waterfowl. But I think it's equally as important because, you know, that's that's what we have to do to ensure that we're shooting, you know, the best shot for shooting what our straight. guns like. Yeah, shooting straight. And we know before we go to the field, hey, you know, I'm shooting a little bit to the left. Maybe I need to shim my buttstock a little bit, you know, to make that to make that shoot true. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that play into that. So I really like, uh, what you guys are doing. And, um, I really, uh, you know, think it's, it's great to have that opportunity to, you know, have different shells to try for Turkey and waterfowl. And it's just saves you a lot of money. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it's about is figuring out what your gun likes because Hey, I've got a few shotguns in there and not one of them is the same. You know, every one of them like different shells better. Every one of them. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at on that is, you know, it's very important to, uh, you know, like my dad always said, know your target, know where to hit that target, know what's behind your target and make sure your gun sighted in. So, you know, I mean, Aim small, miss small. You know what I mean. I mean, let's That's not be tough. like let's not be like my buddy that missed and wasted five TSS loads Ooh, yeah. on two turkeys. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, yeah, Whoa. yeah. Like, shoot a long time with it. You're like, okay, like that's you're you should be aware that that was that's an expensive shot <laughs> yeah put a whole box of it with yeah. nothing to show for it well let's yeah, just empty the whole terrible. mag there boys <laughs> boom 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 <laughs> Click. oh crap <laughs> and we're done hey yeah, look, look man ryan there there was a time where uh i i almost did that me and me and ben were in texas I've, we've told the story a bunch but 
and, and, and I'll bore you from all the details. But the bottom line is we had these birds come in right up on us. And, you know, th- it happened so fast, neither me or, nor Ben could get our guns shouldered all the way. <clears throat> so, listen, I'm a turkey and deer hunter. I like to get – I like to be comfy. I like to get ready. I like to breathe, maybe sip a drink, you know, make a sandwich. I like I like some time. Ben is a wing shooter. Ben is always just ready to boom, 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 boom. He's ready to rip. I am not. That's not who I am. So we're kind of sitting there, and Ben's like, you ready? I'm like, I'm as ready as I'm going to be, I guess. And uh, and he just like, pow, shoots his bird. And I get up, and I'm halfway aiming. It's halfway off, off my shoulder. And I just pow, pow. And I miss, miss. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm I'm in Texas. I'm filming. He shot his bird. like, and, and I know in the back of my brain, I got one more. And these birds, thank God, are the dumbest turkeys alive. And they just stood there. And I finally got anchored and, you know, breathed and shot. But, I mean, you know, it's the same kind of or- ordeal. Like, you look back on the video, and I just shot left. I mean, just shot left. And I don't know. My my gun definitely at that close may start out a little left. I have no idea. But dude, all I know is as I finally got the stupid thing, but oh my goodness, dude. I was yeah. I was nervous. I ain't gonna lie about it. I was hey. I was getting I was like, uh oh. <laughs> Crazy thing about that hunt is you know, John's sitting there, mine was dead, and he was sitting there, boom, boom. I was drawn down, beat on that bird's head. I was like, all right, if 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 you miss one more time, I got two to back you up. And uh and and he he stone stone cold roll it. So I was like, well, we ain't gotta do that today. Yeah. <laughs> I was not about <laughs> to let God. him leave Texas with no turkey. <laughs> oh man. It ain't happening. Oh so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. No. yeah. You would have never let that one down either. No, no hey, no, um, he no, still no, no. I, and I and I no. killed the darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> he still gives me crap about it, which yeah. is fine. That's, that's yeah. just dudes being dudes, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's just who so I am. I've seen something on Facebook, and, and I'm, <clears throat> and I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know about it. So I see people with some of these patterns at like forty yards that are unbelievably tight. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like, yeah. I, I've, I've thought about it. I'm like, dude, like, it's just at, at at a closer distance, it just doesn't leave you any room for air. No. no. Uh, nope. And I, I don't, like, I have, I think mine's a Carlson's, I, I think it's a, a 660. I, I don't I don't really pay attention to, I'm very basic when it comes to stuff. I, I have an 870 Express as my, nice. my turkey gun. Nice. Uh, all you need, brother. Yeah, one of the best in the biz. I, I bought it brand new from Bass Pro like, for like 300 bucks. <laughs> Like, mm-hmm. yeah, and, heck yeah. Um, but I, I'm just, I, I don't know if is that does does that is, is, like is that a bothersome thing to you guys or is it does it? I sometimes I think people are just trying to just have the absolute tightest <clears throat> pattern forty yards as they possibly can. And I'm like, I don't. Sometimes I'm like, think they're just doing it just to have a tight grouping on paper where I'm like, hey, that looks great, but. In reality, it's not exactly what you want. I I don't. That's just a thought that I've I've had recently. Well, the whole game. I'll let you start, and then I'll answer. All right, cool. So the whole thing for me on killing a turkey is, you know, you're beating uh, the turkey, and because like like I've mentioned before, you're getting the tom to come to you, which is totally backwards from how it usually goes. Yes, the hen comes to him. (laughs) So. I don't want a super tight pattern at 40 yards because I want to shoot them at 20. I want to shoot them at 10. I want to get them. That's my goal is to get them right into the decoys. That's what I like to do. But now I think it's all personal preference too. You know, I mean, I'm also the guy that uh, loves to bring home turkey nuggets, you know, to eat. So it's it's like, you know, I've got this cat and mouse game side of me. And then I've also got the killer side of me that's like, I want to eat. I want to feed my family. You know, it's it's kind of this constant thing that I go back and forth with is, man, what do I do today? It's like, well, just try your best to get him as close as you can. And if not, you know, cut him off, get him 
that way, whatever. You'll figure it out. <laughs> Just play it by ear. <laughs> so that, that's kind of what I think about that. Yeah, so yeah. for me, it's kind of – I don't want to uh, – I do want a tight pattern. I just yeah. – um, I I don't want – I don't want to be too tight, right? Like mine kind of is because, you know, if you get now, like, like the Texas story, dude, those birds were like Five six yards. steps. I mean, <laughs> that, they that's were, hard. I don't want it. So <laughs> it's kind of like, hey, you know, you're kind of just shooting a golf ball at it, hoping to God you hit it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I kind of yeah. had that going on. But, you know, as far as me, I think on paper, like my gun doesn't pattern the best. I, I I would say on paper, but dude, I've shot birds at sixty yards with with my gun, so it's like, okay, I I know how effective it is because I've done it. So I don't really, I don't want to say I don't care how it looks on paper, but I I don't like comparing it to something like you're saying. Where it's like, dude, they have so many more pellets. It's like that's cool, but you know, at the end of the day, I still kill birds, and I, I mean, don't, yes. you know, and I don't really, uh, I don't want to say I don't miss often because I definitely do miss, but I don't. I, I've never consistently with my gun just miss birds because it's off pattern. I mean, I, it just I miss them because they're real close, like like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I would say it's like all right, that's great, but it's that's from a sitting position or um, with no nerves or you know from a bench. Yeah, right. And it's like yeah, you know, you start shaking a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, like, that, exactly, exactly. It, so you, this you might pattern be is here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, or you, yeah, it, it's I, don't know, I mean like if that's what you're comfortable with, then then I mean. I don't, I don't care. Like, go for it. Um, but it's just, it, it, I see it. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, that's, like, that's, like, I would rather have, a, you know, a pattern that's like, you know, 15 inches wide of just, you know, like I said, a, you know, a hornet's nest compared to a fist coming through. It's right. because of the, just the margin of error. Um, um, well, but, and then, you know, is it, if you're talking about ducks, I, I would say, and you guys know more about ducks than I do, but you 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 kind of want a wider range just for a little bit of error, or maybe you're not at, you know ahead of the bird as much as you would like to be because it came in you know at mock Jesus, and you kind of just had time for to get it as close as you could before it got too far away. I mean, it's not a stationary target. Yeah, you you have to have a little bit more spread. Like I had, um, I shot a load. Uh, I think it was Boss. It, uh, it was the war chief, uh, and it was honestly like at 20 yards, it was just, it was, it was too tight. Um, and I was like, God, oh my God, a pattern like phenomenal. But I was like, that's just for me at that distance, especially around here, like that's, that's too tight. Uh, but we were getting ready to go to Arkansas, um, for duck and, and geese. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try that out with my, my full choke. And I, I shot it at, at 40 yards. I was like, I want to see what it does. And I was like, that's my goose load. I was like, with a, with a full choke, the boss, two and three quarter inch war chiefs, uh, number fives. Um, first two yeah. geese I freaking shot at were a little, like a little bit farther. I think they were probably both right about 40 yards, honestly. Um, both stone dead. And I was like, all right, like I, I'm yeah. set. Um, and I think for us, the, the biggest thing is just really just knowledge of your shot. Um, and it, it's, I, I'd say more so in the, for the waterfowl world, like understanding how far away, like 40 <laughs> yards is to, to really make a shot. Like that's not, that, that's not a close distance. Um, when you're trying to, to judge all of the, all of the factors, um, but it, it's just really understanding what you're going out there. Um, what tool you're going out there with? Um, and it's I, it's just it's crazy to see like once you start putting different shells on paper at different yardages, you really start to understand to what what is actually happening. Um, 
Like I text Brody every time I shoot a new shell uh, or, or a different distance or, or different choke or whatever it is. And it, every time you're, you're, you're messing with something, it's really eye opening to see it. Yeah. Um, so I hadn't actually ever had a chance to shoot, um, um, the Longbeard XRs and, uh, I had one of our packs. Um, so I shot that and I was, I see people talk about it all the time, but I shot at it, um, at 30. Um, and I was like that, I was honestly very happy with it. Yeah, uh, that's what so I do. I'm like, I'd have, I'd go to the woods every day, every day of the week with that. But, uh, I'm shooting, uh, I'll actually be shooting TSS for the first time this year, um, with, uh, Salt Creek. They're a, uh, they're out of, out of Utah. He does, he does a phenomenal job. It's all, all hand loaded TSS. Uh, so his stuff is, is great. So, um, I shot that as well and I was, very happy with that as well. Right. Um, but it's, uh, I, I shot that and his 410 mm-hmm. stuff. Um, so me, me and my daughter will be, be shooting Salt Creek this year. Nice, and, man. uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, sure. Heck yeah. I, I'm not like, I'm not a big fan of, of change. I like to just <laughs> continue to use the same stuff, but, <laughs> um, that, that is one thing I, I am, I am excited for. And it's, uh, especially after, I mean, like I understood last year, like the, the super X, like I understand what it was going to do. Um, but it's, it is, I gotta say it's nice sometimes to have, um, depending on your situation, just that little bit of extra <laughs> help when you, when you can get it. Heck yeah. So I've got one more question and then I'm sure Ben's got another one. Ben, Ben, Ben likes to talk Ryan. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you know this about him. Ben is a talker, so I'm sure yeah. I'm sure he'll have something else to say. But yeah. <clears throat> I've had. Are you guys uh, ever thinking about, or have you already thought about doing doing one one of two things? Either getting with some like choke tube companies and throwing in a a couple different chokes to try with the shells, and have you ever thought about doing the deer hunting side of things? And maybe throwing in just a couple different brands and maybe different grains and have like a deer box. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> to, to both questions, uh, there's definitely there's definitely some stuff in the works. Um, nice. So it's we're we're trying to we're trying to kind of master one section of it first before um, before moving on. Um, but uh we've been talking with uh with Indian Creek um a, a little bit, so I, I think there's some some potential there for that. Um in terms of having having different choke tubes. Um as well and potentially some other choke tube companies as well. Um and it's some and it's gonna be the, the similar I would say a similar con um uh, conversation as I had with every single ammo manufacturer I spoke with at, at, at NWTF where I <clears> will <throat> not push one product more than the other. I don't care what you shoot. For, for us, it's all about getting the most effective tool into the, the hunter's hands to take with him to the field. Like whatever that's going to be, whether that's the cheapest le- lead load possible, if that pattern's good on your gun, Hell man, go go shoot it. If it's super expensive TSS with a super nice choke, or it's just a factory modified choke, whatever it's going to be, we we honestly don't care. Right. Um, and I, it, it was it was really refreshing to see the reactions um from the ammo companies themselves because they were like, no, like we get it, and it's I think probably the the biggest reason that. I, I would have like those interactions um, and the reactions from them was at the end of the day, those guys are just duck hunters and turkey hunters. Um, so like they, they immediately got it. So um, right. the more partnerships that we can, we can get um, is only going to broaden our horizons and um, allow hunters to try more things to be more effective. Um, and like you guys, I'm sure have seen a thousand times 
choke recommendations, shell recommendations, gun, like there's so many different things that it's kind of overwhelming. And you're like, you don't, you don't know until you've tried it. And the only, I would say the biggest reason the guys are selling stuff, they're like, oh, I'm selling the choke tube. It's like, well, why are you selling it? It's like, well, it's, yeah. you know, probably didn't do what they wanted it to do. So now they had the hassle of buying it. Now that they, they've shot it and now they're like, well, that's not what I want. So now they're selling it. Now they're freaking losing money on it. Oh, yeah. Chances are, because most people aren't going to buy a used choke tube for, for the same, the same price. Um, so it's just like you're wasting, there's a lot of money wasted there. Um, so it's, there, there's some, there's some stuff coming down the pipeline and some of it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, but I think we're going to get some other stuff in order prior to the Delta waterfowl show. Um, so we have a lot of big purchases there that are, um, going to be made, uh, here in the upcoming months. Um, but July 26th through the 28th there in, in Baton Rouge will be the, the Delta show. Um, so we're going to have duck loads, turkey loads. Um, and then there might be, there might be a couple other things um, that have been discussed that, that may make an appearance there. Sweet. That's awesome. Well, John, you actually covered all the questions very well. I am for once out of questions. So uh, oh it's a shocker. Goodness. I know. It's a shocker. <laughs> but, but you know, I, I have asked everything that I wanted to ask, and I think we've covered everything very well. Perfect. So well, sorry, man. I probably stole your thunder. I probably kind of rambled on a little bit with uh, <laughs> with some of the stuff. I get no, I right. get a little carried. Hey, no, that's no, what no, this no. Is all about man. You didn't you didn't steal my thunder at all, my friend. None, nothing. You didn't steal nothing. I can promise you that. Yeah. I'll tell you if you did. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. You got that beautiful beard to fall back on. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, right. It's it's cushy. It it's it's there. So, <laughs> All I've got is my is my is my firefighter stash. That's Dude, it. That's a that's the <laughs> best stash I think I've ever seen. That's a good oh, yeah. one. It's my wife calls it a porn a porn stash. Well, oh, that's great. I mean, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm like you're lucky. I'm like you're a lucky woman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, where can so, everybody <laughs> find you guys? Uh, what what uh, socials, website, all that kind of stuff. So Facebook Pattern Pros USA. Instagram, just Patent Pros, uh, and then our website is patentprosusa.com. And, uh, yeah, it's just come see us. Um, if you're t tired of actually wasting money uh, on spending a bu on buying a box different box of shells, um, come check us out. Uh, for guys who shoot Migra for waterfowl, um, Migra came into the turkey world. Uh, as I'm sure most of you know by now. Um, so they will be in our, our TSS box for 12 gauge and 20 gauge. Awesome. So that will be, that will be coming to the website. Um, the 12 will be coming to the website, uh, I think this week, uh, and ho hopefully the 20 gauge. Uh, we're still working, um, working through some stuff, um, some paperwork stuff, but, um, yeah, so th there's definitely some stuff that uh, some guys haven't tried before, um, and it's just it's going to be significantly cheaper than you buying even just a couple couple different boxes of shells. So if you want to save some money and actually find a shell that that patterns right for you, then then uh, come check us out. Well, that's, there we that's, go. Uh, yeah, there you go with that, and don't forget everybody to. For all things Rooted Television, Rooted Podcast, go to our website at RootedTelevision.com to get episodes, new releases, and merch. We have a pile of merch on there, shirts, hats, hoodies, everything in between. And with that, John, the redneck is out. See you guys. <laughs> See you guys. Boom. For all things Rooted Podcast and Rooted Television, and I mean hats, shirts, hoodies, and other merch, check out our friends at CH Lone Star Pro and the link that is in our description.